Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Mario. I am an apostolic Pentecostal. And if you're visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I've missed you. Even though we haven't personally met, I still want to know what your name is. And your name is... Hey, what's up? You seem like a cool cat. But because you have navigated your way to my channel, you have made it just in time for the Daily Mop, which makes you a mop head. Now, what's a mop head, you ask? Well, like with any good old mop, you take it and you start using it and you start cleaning those dirty floors to make them clean. So with the Daily Mop, you're going to be hearing messages of power, messages of praise, messages of prayer to clean up with what you got going on up here and in here with the Word of God. But with no further ado, let's get into today's message of power. And today's title is Jesus Was and Is God. <laughs> Roll the clip. <laughs> Now, before I get started in this video, I want to let you all know a couple of things of what I believe and what I don't believe. Now, quite frankly, I don't believe in the Trinity. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I don't believe in the three in one. I don't believe there are three distinct persons in the Godhead. I don't believe there are three personalities coexisting co-eternally because I do believe that the Father is the Son and the Son is the Father. I do believe that the Father is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the Father. And I also believe that the Holy Spirit is the Son and the Son is the Holy Spirit. And I know I'm really talking to two different types of people. One, the people who already believe in the oneness of God. And in this video, you're going to be equipped with Bible verses on how I combat the Trinity or you're gonna I'm gonna be talking to those who do currently believe in the Trinity and that's okay if you do but just understand it's simply not true and I'm gonna show you in the Bible I'm gonna show you specific Bible verses of which every single one of them Jesus was speaking because we know Jesus to be the center of all Christianity we know if that if he didn't die and rose again that all of Christianity literally doesn't exist but we do believe in the resurrection of Jesus that he did die on the cross and and he did rise again to show that he was God. So now that we know that, let's first identify the most obvious thing. Most people know and refer to Jesus as the Son of God, as he referred to that many times. But when did he admit that he was the Son of God? We find this in Luke 22, 70. So they all said, are you the Son of God then? And he answers, you say that I am. I just imagine Jesus just smirking saying, yeah, you say that I am, knowing that of course I am. Of course, that's the reason why you scream blasphemy toward me because I am in fact the same level, the same status, the God, the Christ, the savior of all men who has come here and talking to you all right now. So he says, you say that I am. So now we've identified that Jesus is the son. Let's keep that up there. So we, we keep a count. Jesus is the son and the son is Jesus. Now let's figure out who's the father. Who is Jesus praying to in the garden? More importantly, what was the name of the father okay let's let's go back to the name okay the name is the thing that has the power inside of it when we pray in jesus name it's because jesus name has power when we pray to god we say thank you jesus thank you god it's the exact same thing so let's figure out the name of the father john 5 43 jesus says i have come in my father's name now who's speaking again jesus he says i have come in my father's name so if Jesus is his name and he's coming his father's name, that means the father's name is Jesus. So now we know that Jesus is the father. Again, so let's keep that up there. Pay attention. Jesus is the son. Jesus is the father. And if that's not enough proof for you, Jesus actually said in John 10 30, I and my father are one. If we use the mathematic substitution principle, if you want to get fancy with it, we can now say that because Jesus is the son, and Jesus is the Father, now we know that the Son is the Father, or Jesus is Jesus. Now let's figure out what's the name of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised he would send to us, okay? John 14, 16, Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. So Jesus says, I will ask the Father, okay, and he will send you a helper. You know, what is he talking about? Well, Jesus later identifies the helper as the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26, but the helper, aka the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Okay, again, who's speaking again? Jesus is speaking. 
he says, I'll send, I'll ask the Father to send you a helper. And now we know the helper to be the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. So now we know Jesus is speaking. Holy Spirit will be sent from the Father in his name, which is Jesus. So now we know that Jesus is the Holy Spirit. So again, let's do the exact same thing. If Jesus is the Son and Jesus is the Father, now we know the Son is the Father. But if we also know that Jesus is the Son and Jesus is the Holy Spirit because he would be sent in his name, now we know the Son is the Holy Spirit. So if you put these all together, you start seeing that Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, the Son is the Father and is the Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The prophecy is true. That's the revelation of the oneness of God. When you realize that it's not three separate distinct beings or whatever philosophies out there, it's Jesus. See, Jesus never revealed his name in all of the Old Testament. We are so blessed because he came in the New Testament, in the New Age. He literally split time, okay, between before Christ and after his death to say, the God you've been worshiping for all these years, his name was Jesus. So the reason why I can't believe in the Trinity is that would make God a limited God, that, that it was impossible for him to be in heaven and on the earth at the same time, even though he was the one who literally created the heavens and the earth. If we believe he created everything, why do you think that it's impossible for him to be in two or more places at once? As a matter of fact, right now as we speak, there's probably a church on the other side of the world that's praising the name of Jesus, and he's right there in the midst of them. Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Jesus is here right now as you're watching this YouTube video because two of us are gathered in his name. Jesus can be everywhere and anywhere that he wants to. He literally created this universe. How is it so hard to believe that he could be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost all at the same time in the past, in the present, and is to come? How is it so hard to believe that there is just one God? I hope you receive this message with kindness and in love, but before you leave, do three things for me. One, like this video. Two, make sure you leave a comment down below. I wanna interact with you all. I wanna answer your all's questions. Tell me what you believe. I'm interested to know what, what everyone's input is on this subject of the Trinity versus the oneness of God. And three, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And the very last thing, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you know when I upload the next video. Uh, thank you all for watching. My name is Brother Mario. God bless you.